Hi, everyone. In this video, I want to share how I recently used GatherTown to set up a virtual workshop. So the first question that you need to work out is how many people you expect in your workshop. And accordingly, we will need to set up where the different talks will take place, for example. And uh, for that, you can either make your own map or in my case, because I didn't have a lot of time, I just repurposed one of the default maps that is provided by Gather. So first you would need to create a new space and you can give any name. In this case, I will just say conf. You can add a password if you want. This is the first layer of access control that you can uh, provide. And then we have the, all these default maps, right? There's quite a lot of um, variety that Gather provides. And if you are organizing a workshop, then there is actually quite a lot of options here as well. And I particularly like this professional um, environment, and this is what I will also use in this workshop. Okay, so the map uh, looks basically like this. You enter the workshop environment, and then we have um, this big lobby, and we also have directions on where the different rooms are, and uh, we have quite a lot of rooms actually in this workshop, which I would not necessarily need. Uh, so I will, I will uh, edit this map. Uh, the one thing that I can use is the keynote room. So if we go straight ahead, there's a special room for keynote. Uh, there's a Zoom call that is integrated, uh, which the attendees can go to by clicking on this link, and they will be redirected to a different Zoom window where they can attend part of the workshop, for example. I will start off by going to the settings and then customize space and open map maker. Now here I see three different halls, right? So this is the entrance and I probably don't need this. Um, let's just say that my uh, attendees will start around here um, and then I will need this keynote space. So what I can do is I can make this uh, main area as my default room and then I can delete this because I don't need it. Okay, so now as you can see, there is quite, um, a lot going on in this room and these are not editable things because this is part of the map itself. So I want to change things up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to download these backgrounds. I'm going to make the changes offline and then I will re-upload them. So in order to download the map, we can say download background. So I can save this. And then I can do the same thing for the keynote room. All right, so these are my maps. And first let's go to the main hall and I will now edit it using uh, the default paint application that Windows provide. Of course, you can use uh, Photoshop or Illustrator or some more advanced tools if you want, uh, but these changes are trivial. So I can just use paint for that. So the idea is that we have one uh, program. So there's only one track. And I think I will keep most of my program in the keynote hall uh, over Zoom. So I don't need all these extra meeting halls, but we do have a poster session and there we, we expect that we will have quite a lot of posters. So I will repurpose these three rooms into a giant poster hall. And then we also have some coffee breaks and I will turn this presentation room into a coffee area where we will put desks and then we can have topics and people can discuss. Okay, so let's first change the coffee area. So this is the coffee area.
And now I also want to add the logo of the workshop. So this way when people enter, this will be the first thing they see. And then they can also go over to these information panels and they can look up information. So basically we have around 10 different posters. And what I want to do is to have 10 areas, placemats for each of the posters. And uh, whoever will come in those regions will only be able to hear one of the presenters. All right, and this will be our main conference area. Then for the keynote area, let's say we have around 50 people and there are too many chairs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get rid of uh, chairs that are in the middle rows. So here we are, right where we left off. So here's an option to update the background. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload one of the backgrounds. It gets updated like this. And then I can save this. And I go to the main area. So if you want to test how this looks like, we can actually go here. And so this is what it would look like as a user. First of all, we have to update some of the impossible areas. So I can just press control and this will be the eraser. So I can get rid of the impossible points that are no longer needed. In the coffee area, we will have three different desks that will be uh, for three different topics. And I also have already a picture um, that says what would be the topics for each of the tables. Okay. But now we also want to tell which table it is. So I will place some text. Now let's add some tables with some coffee around. So now for a coffee mug. And let's also put some decoration. So some sort of plants. I see this PowerPoint slide, which I don't need anymore. I can go to the object mode and then delete mode. And then this 
uh, gray area, this is the point that is linked to this particular object. So if I click on it, the object gets removed. And then let's put our picture. So here I'm going to go to create new and I will pick a blank one cross one box. So this is essentially a, a, a transparent box and I will link this to an image poster. And let's say, first of all, I will choose a program. So this will be the overview of the program. So this is, I will place it and we see that this gets a little bit darker. Then I will choose a new one. And this time this will be for the house rules. Cool. So let's save this and see what this actually looks like. So we can walk around and if we come close, we see a small uh, sort of uh, overview preview of what the information is. And if you press X, then we actually see the full version of this. So this is the whole program. Okay. And we press X again to exit this view. And then we go to the next one. And here we actually see, okay, so this will be the house rules. Cool. Um, let's do one more thing. So let's uh, update instead of information, let's call it a uh, program and let's call this house rules. And then we can see that the information has been updated. Now I have to press save. Okay, the map is saved. So we will be able to see this information here as well. So, so we can see the program here. We press X, we see the whole program. And here are the house rules. Cool. So uh, the next thing I want to do is to add actually which topics are associated to each of these tables around here. So what we will do is, again, in the object mode, I will add a poster table. If I click on poster, there are lots of stands and there's a poster table for legacy systems. And here for low resolution image, I can pick the table topics. So this is done. We place this around here. And we actually see this. What I do want is once the keynote is done, this table only becomes available at that time. So I can even set an activation time uh, when this certain object becomes available. So for that, I will choose the select mode and I will actually click on this gray box. And so this becomes available. And if I click here, I can actually set the object active end time and start time. So I will see that it becomes active at a particular time stamp. Then of course, we also need to look at the poster area. So we can do the same, we can go to the objects. So we can choose this. And let's say we place these around here. Okay, so let's say we have only six posters. So now I want to upload uh, each of the submitted posters. And for that, I will have to click on this gray box and we have this activated and let's say I want to say, okay, which picture do I want to upload? High resolution image. And I go to the poster area and okay, I have this PNG poster. And again, I can choose another poster at this point. I only have one, so this is the only one that I'm showing. And then we can press save. we see that the poster becomes available. Okay, so one more thing that we want to add is uh, that each of these poster maps be private spaces. And for that, we can we have tiles, a uh, particular type of tiles, which are called private space tiles. So for these tiles, we can set an ID and only the tiles that um, actually have the same ID are allocated to the same area. And the people that are in that particular ID can see and talk to each other. 
if you click on color, then it, uh, the tiles actually become visible in the room, which actually looks really ugly. We're not going to do that, but uh, let's start. All right. So what is the effect of these private spaces? That's basically, if you enter one of these, you, you see you have entered a private space and only people that are within this region will be able to see or hear you. So this is great if you want to have discussions, but there's not a lot of uh, space. Then we, of course, need to make these tables as private spaces. So this time, let's choose something else. And of course, we don't want these tables uh, to be possible because when people walk around, they'll be able to stand on the table itself. We, let's say we don't want that. So we will set this area as impossible. So it has the same effect as the walls. Uh, people can walk uh, close to it, but they cannot walk through it. And now you're here. So again, we have entered a private space. And so people that are on table B will not be able to hear what people in table A are saying, for example. Then one thing that we have not talked about are the spawn points. These are the tiles where people, uh, once they enter the venue, this is where they will start from. And now, of course, we want to make some changes in the keynote. If you want to have a, your main program on an external uh, platform like Zoom or uh, Microsoft Teams, then uh, you can create a meeting there and for the invitation link, you can copy that and paste it here. If you want to have your main uh, conference in Zoom as well, then you would need something that we call as spotlight space tiles. Now these are the tiles where uh, if somebody stands on these and they will be able to talk to or broadcast to the whole room. So if I step on uh, one of these spotlight areas, it says that I am uh, broadcasting to the entire room. So this is great for making, for example, public announcements, which is also something that we would like to make. The other thing is what we can do is we can make each of these chairs as different private spots. All of these chairs are now private spaces and anyone who stands on the podium there, they will be able to make public announcements. So one last thing that I want to discuss is access controls. So how can you invite people and how can you make sure that uh, unrelated people do not enter your room? If you go to the settings, we have some nice options here. In terms of room access, you can change the password here. Uh, remove if you want to, if you want to open it up for everybody. And you can also shut down your room. Uh, people will only be able to access this particular room once it's open. Uh, then we also have a premium dashboard. Uh, this premium dashboard is basically, it just means additional settings. It doesn't mean for premium user. Uh, so instead of everyone being able to attend, if you want to limit it to even to being even more exclusive event, then you can add a guest list here and only people with that particular email address will be able to enter your room. Uh, on the day of the event, if, uh, for example, you have people who are misbehaving, then there's also the option to ban users. So you can click, uh, right click on the name of a particular user, and there are two options. You can either block them or you can ban them. Uh, a word of caution, the banning is on IP address basis. This is an irreversible action, and you have to be careful with testing this. Okay, so now we've gone over the main things that you need to know in order to set up your own workshop or conference. I hope that you found this video useful and I wish you good luck for setting up your own virtual event.